Hello again, it's Tim Spector of the Zovi COVID study, giving you the second week of your selected questions. And the first question this week comes from Brenda, who says, I had both my AstraZeneca vaccines with no side effects. I participated in a coronavirus antibody test for research purposes. The test was negative. So I'm a bit confused. Am I protected or not? Now, this is a good question because it is complicated because there are two types of antibody tests going around at the moment. And one measures what's called the anti-S antibodies and the other the anti-N antibodies. And if you've had both vaccines and no antibodies are showing up, like Brenda, it's highly likely you had an anti-N test. And this looks for antibodies that recognize something, a little molecule within the virus that's called the nucleocapsid. It's right in the middle and it's that's the N for the nucleocapsid. And that just indicates that there's only picking up natural antibodies. OK, uh, and these would be built up from natural exposure to the virus uh, and would show you had some natural immunity, but doesn't say anything about uh, the uh, the vaccine effectiveness. Now, the anti-S tests that are increasingly being found and uh, will, will be common soon, detect antibodies against the spike protein on the surface of the virus. And because COVID vaccines are based on the spike protein, uh, anti, all anti-S tests detect the antibodies produced both that you might get naturally and also through vaccination. And so depending on the timing of them, they should be able to sort out uh, whether it was the vaccination that gave it gave you the, the antibody or uh, you had uh, recent COVID. So if you're interested in, in reading more, uh, then we've written a blog, which is uh, linked here in this uh, description. And you might want to know that we're also currently conducting research through the app on anti-N antibodies and we're inviting 50,000 of you guys a week to uh, have this test, uh, particularly if you've logged a positive PCR test in the past, because uh, we, we want to look at this natural uh, immunity and see how long it lasts. And we're going to invite anyone who's had COVID in the past but never logged a test, only their symptoms uh, shortly, because those people missed out on a lot of this testing. And some people may have long lasting immunity and be very interesting to find out. Now, our next question comes from Sue. And this is a very common question and saying, is there any correlation between the severity of reaction you get after having the vaccine jab to how your body may have reacted to you having actual COVID? And of course, you could turn the question around. What we've found, Sue, is that we found that the the younger you are, generally the milder your COVID symptoms are of the actual infection, but the greater your experience of negative uh, after effects of the jab. And this is the other way around in older people who tend to have less reactions to the vaccine, but more severe reactions to COVID. And this is because younger people have generally stronger immune systems. And this is why uh, younger kids rarely have any problems with the virus at all. Uh, and that's uh, solved that particular mystery. So while young people are less likely to get symptomatic COVID, we tend to see them getting more side effects of the vaccine, which is often linked to them having a previous COVID infection, whether that's symptomatic or not. So if you've previously been infected uh, and you did have symptoms, you're nearly twice as likely to be to have side effects uh, after a vaccine as someone who hasn't. And again, this is, is increased if you're younger. And this is probably due to natural immunity that's already present in your system and your strong natural defenses to the virus. So if you are having problems after the vaccine, you can just 
it's, it's get through it for those couple of days, which would be just minor, and say, well, this shows uh, I've got a really good immune system that might have stopped me getting anything too severe. So don't be too hard on yourself. Now, we've got a question from Will, which is, what is the risk of a fully vaccinated individual, so having had the, the two jabs and waiting after at least two weeks after the second one, catching COVID-19 and spreading it to other people unwittingly. We know something about this now because there have been some preliminary data. Uh, in April, the Center of Disease Control, the CDC in the US, released initial results from a study on the real-world effectiveness of, of two so-called mRNA vaccines, which are quite similar in the way they work. That's the Pfizer-BioNTech one and the Moderna one, both of which are available in this country. And the researchers collected uh, weekly nasal slops from all of the participants to see if they had any viral genetic material um, that in theory could be passed to someone else. And this is regardless of whether they had any COVID-19 symptoms. So they're swabbing them every week. And what they showed was the vaccines were 90% effective at blocking infections, whether it was symptomatic or asymptomatic. And so they could find no virus in there. Uh, these are in people uh, who had two doses of the vaccine and slightly less effective, about 80% effective in those who just had that single jab. Now, this means there was a 90% decrease in infections in people who are fully vaccinated uh, compared to a similar group of unvaccinated people. So as your likelihood of getting the virus uh, itself is very much reduced, uh, both after one, but particularly after two doses of the vaccine, the likelihood of you spreading it is uh, considerably lower because also, even if you do get it, you're probably going to have much lower levels of that virus. And so it's going to be harder to spread from your nose or, or mouth to anywhere else. And there was a paper in Nature a couple of months ago which uh, told us that this, this viral load uh, was much less and that linked that the amount of the virus to its infectiveness. So all this is good news. So just to give you some actual numbers based on the uh, Zoe COVID data, uh, your risk of the virus given the current rates in the UK, which are low, are, you know, uh, between two and 3,000 cases a day. With one dose of the vaccine, uh, your risk of getting it um, is one in 32,000 two doses, one in 68,000. So your chance of getting it is very small. If you do get it, your chance of passing it on is also very small. It's not zero, but it does happen. And interestingly, the paper this week showed that uh, there are some symptoms of vaccination COVID, and one of them is having a, a sneeze or sneezing a lot when you wouldn't expect to do. So it's small but still do remain vigilant. Hope that answers that question. The final question comes from Hugh, uh, who asks, can the over-the-counter cold and flu dispense sprays, things that you, you stick up your nose, protect against COVID-19? And there is a small amount of evidence that looks like it can help to provide some protection in the nose by forming a uh, a mechanical barrier in the uh, nose mucosa so that the virus doesn't stick there very long or finds it hard to grab a foothold and replicate. And that's its basis um, for its use in cold viruses. Um, but because COVID-19 is a, a general respiratory virus, it can enter through the mouth, through the eyes, etc. And uh, while it might have some uh, minor effects, it's unlikely to work as full protection. But just tell you a, a bit more about it, because there is a team uh, at Swansea University who are currently in the process of running a clinical trial called the ICE COVID star study uh, on a different leading on a, a leading brand of these nasal sprays on uh, around 480 participants, and we don't know the results of that yet. But 
these defense sprays, uh, which they have in most countries and lots of different brands around, generally have the same sort of ingredients. And the commonest ones are made of um, carrageenan, which is a, a protein found in seaweeds, which gives it this slimy uh, lubricant effect, which uh, is uh, used to coat your nose and, and makes the virus, finds it hard to stick on. Uh, and therefore, it, it um, traps it and so uh, gets ejected from the nose without going down into the lungs, etc. Um, but the number of trials that have been done with, with this that have been published, uh, there are a few of them, some of them up to 200 people, have shown only modest and often non-significant uh, effects. So they are reducing the number of colds, uh, and particularly if you catch it very early in the last in the first uh, few hours and possibly reducing the length of it, but it doesn't seem to work in everybody and uh, the effects are really pretty modest. And there has been one laboratory-based study, uh, not done in humans, that suggests that when you sort of mock up this in a laboratory, you can see that uh, these sort of lubricants could work to uh, inhibit the virus. But I think we really need to wait for these uh, human trials to be done uh, before we can uh, start giving any, any real clear advice that it's going to be useful. Um, and we did speak to uh, one of the, the makers of the leading brands uh, in the UK, VIX, and um, the, the develop and make these, and this is what they, they said. VIC's first defense has only been researched in vivo, that means live, uh, in humans, with respect to the common cold. We have not tested clinically whether VIC's first defense works against SARS-CoV-2. It is a nasal spray medical device that's intended to be used as the first signs of a cold as it can help to reduce the action of cold viruses. VIC's first defense provides a non-specific physical barrier on the mucosa that supports the national washout effect to remove cold viruses from the nasal cavity. So the response is basically uh, they don't know and haven't tested it. Now, thanks for your amazingly good questions. Keep them coming. Do remember to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to know when the next video is coming up. And uh, I'll be back next week to answer some more fascinating questions. So head to the app now and sign up for them. Thanks for listening.